Hey YouTube, it's Marquita, and today I'm here to bring you guys a video about um, a subject that I get asked about probably daily. Um, ever since we started our journey and once we conceived, we get inbox messages, comments on our video, um, Facebook comments, messages on Facebook, asking us questions about our donor. And Krista and I have shied away from doing this video for a while because our views might be a little bit controversial and we really didn't want to alienate any of the other people in our community that um, are using a donor or have different views about it. But we keep getting asked about donor questions. So I'm just going to do this video and um, I apologize in advance if anyone has different views on anything or the way that we feel. Um, but this is the way that we feel about things that have to do with a donor. So the number one question that we get asked is, what sperm bank did we use? And the short version of that answer is basically that we uh, had a known donor to begin with. We tried with the known donor for about six cycles and things went south very quickly with that donor. Um, for anyone who is thinking about using a known donor, I would definitely encourage you to have um, legal documents written up. Um, also ensure that you have a verbal and written agreement with that donor that they are going to give up their parental rights. I would also do a lot of research about your state's laws concerning uh, donor fathers. Some states do not care that you have a legal written agreement and if that donor were to decide that he wants parental rights later on, he could sue and actually win for those rights in depending on what state you live in. We live in Washington state and as long as the your child is conceived via um, assistant reproductive, which basically means that you and the donor did not have um, intercourse, then the donor gives up their rights to that, but you have to have legal documentation stating that. Um, so we had a really bad experience with a known donor and we're really not going to go into details with it because this is a public forum but we have really we did not have a positive experience and after that we decided to start using a sperm bank we went through pacific reproductive and it was after a lot of different research um a lot of, i know a lot of people say oh my gosh sperm banks are so expensive i'd rather go the known donor route because it's cheaper but in our minds we figure children are expensive and it was a good gauge for us to figure out if we're able to financially able to have a child, um, you know, $600 a vial should be something that we could be able to save money for and, you know, be able to use for our donor. So, um, although I will never, so please don't ask, we will never give the number of our donor out, um, just for several reasons, but, um, we are looking to join the donor sibling registry and um, hoping for that to um, come to fruition for Riley to be able to meet her siblings, but I'll discuss that later on further in the video. Um, the next question that we get asked all the time, um, and I think that it's either by passers-by or it's by straight couples or sometimes it's even by lesbian couples but the question is are we gonna allow which I don't like that word but we're are we gonna allow our children to find their donor and the question is of course um and the reason why and we approach this from a personal standpoint and I approached it from a professional standpoint being a therapist I see a lot of clients who have been adopted or they um, don't have contact with one or more of their biological parents for whatever reason. And those children are really missing something out of their lives. Um, Krista and I feel very secure in our ability to parent our children. And I don't feel that my children, when they're 18 or 21 or whenever, if they ever choose to look for their donor, is going to replace either of us as our children's parents, um, biologically or otherwise. Um, and seeing children that I've counseled that had closed adoptions and they could not, you know, they had no way of finding who their adoptive, their, who their birth mothers were, caused those children to act out in a lot of different ways. Um, 
cause them to not know where they come from. And that's something, that's a major decision that we decided we cannot make for our children. That needs to be a decision that they make on their own when they're adults. Um, that was our main basis for starting with the known donor to begin with because we wanted our child to be able to say, this is where I come from and this is what my donor looks like and you know, have characteristics of my donor. I, we don't live in a, in a vacuum to where we're so consumed with the fact that our children have two mommies that we want to erase the donor. Like our children, as of right now, Riley would not be here if it were, was not for our donor. So it would be very selfish of us to just say, well, you have two moms and you just had some random guy and like whatever. Um, we also did not want to go the anonymous donor route or um, have a closed donor because God forbid if something were to happen medically with Riley, we have the security of knowing that our sperm bank will contact the donor so that we can get additional information about his medical history and be able to, you know, possibly find a match for bone marrow or anything like that. Because although Krista and I will both be carrying, we may not be a match if something were to happen to our children and that donor might have the key to something that health wise can help save one of our children. So those are the different things. Um, like I said, professionally, I've dealt with a lot of clients who have experienced this, not from the um, donor standpoint, but from the adoption standpoint or from, um, you know, maybe their father isn't there in their life. Maybe their mother isn't in their life. And I feel like every child wants to know where they come from. So who am I to say you don't get to know who your donor is? So I emphasize on the word allow when I first ask the question, because I think that it's I just don't agree with not allowing your child to know where they come from. I love learning where I come from and I, both of my parents are in my life and I could not imagine not knowing where a whole half of me, the whole other genetic half of me, like who those people are. So that's my soapbox. Those are my two cents on that about why we have a willing to be known donor and I would encourage anyone who is in that process to get a to get a willing to be known donor. You just never know. You have feelings now about things, but once your child is conceived, you cannot change that. There, the uh, document that you signed from your sperm bank explicitly says that once you choose an anonymous donor, that's it. it. Doesn't matter if the child has a medical issue. It doesn't matter any of those things. They will not contact the donor, and that's a huge decision to be making for for a parent to be making for a child. For the rest of their lives soapbox rant ended okay third question that we get asked all the time is about riley's ethnicity we have already said that we are not going to discuss her specific ethnicity but i would just say that any nationality that you can probably think of riley is probably mixed with um i know that krista and i outwardly appear that we're african-american and i guess a lot of people just assume that that is you know our basic makeup, but Chris and I both come from varied backgrounds of ethnicities. We actually both share a common bloodline in uh, being German. We actually have a German last name, which is crazy. Um, and what else? Um, Native American, and I know that the joke is that all African Americans have a Native American ancestor, but I have several. So does Krista. Um, my grandfather is biracial. And so Riley is a mix of every color of the rainbow, every nationality, and we love it that way. Um, it adds to her character, adds to her personality. It People look at her and they can't really place what nationality she is. They see Krista and I and they identify that we're African American and they don't necessarily know who the carrier was, um, who's the gestational parent. And so they see her, but then Riley has days where she looks like she could be of Asian descent. She has days where she looked like she could be of Hispanic descent. Um, she has her days when she just looks like she could be a mix of all kinds of ethnicities. And we love that. Um, I have no issues with the fact that our donor is biracial or multiracial and because I come from a very background, that would be like me saying, I don't want a child who looks biracial because that doesn't, because our child doesn't look like me because my whole family is a rainbow of people. And both of our families are a rainbow of different nationalities of people. And I think that she has the best qualities of 
all of our different nationalities. Um, also, as far as her nationality is concerned, um, we could not find an African-American donor. We initially, when we first started this search for our donor, we looked for an African-American donor, but African-American men that are purely African-American either are primarily anonymous, they don't wanna be known, which we, as I mentioned before, that's a no-no for us. And, or if they did wanna be known, they didn't have the personality, educational background, or any of the other things that we were looking for. So over time, ethnicity just went further and further down the list. It was not something that was important to us um, because it's our child and we're going to love her regardless. And even though Riley might be lighter than me or uh, might sh share a different, edu um, not educational, a different ethnicity than I may have, she looks like me in a lot of different ways. And I'm sure that our future children would look like Krista. And so that is perfectly fine with me. Um, so yeah. So the fourth question that we get asked uh, quite often is, will we allow for Riley to um, meet her siblings? And the answer is yes. It goes hand in hand with having the willing to be known donor and wanting to know where you come from. Um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with her meeting her siblings. I think that it's kind of cool. I would have loved to have like long lost siblings out there that I can connect with that it could be in different parts of the world or different parts of the country or the state, what have you. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, we will be adding ourselves to the donor sibling registry and um, we're really looking forward to in the next 10 years or so, maybe reaching out to some of those donor families, maybe having some get togethers and like maybe just getting to know them and maybe not having a, like deep relationship but at least Riley and our other children are able to know like I have another brother or another sister in another state that comes from different parents and I think it would be really neat to like look and see those different features in those other children um and just talk to their parents and connect and just you know you know they're like an extended extended family for us so yes, we will allow for our children to reach out to not only their donor, but to um, their siblings of that donor. And then to just round out the end of the video, <clears throat> some of the other questions that we get asked frequently are how did we choose our donor? And I think I've kind of covered that over in the video um, for the most part and just in general throughout my journey and on Facebook but basically we chose our donor based on his educational background Krista and I are um, proudly educated and we enjoy education and so we wanted to have a donor that matched us intellectually so that way we could you know have a child that we made sure like academics was a big thing that was ingrained in her genetics so um, intellectually educational back backgrounds um, his personality and, um, his pictures were kind of, you know, they were nice to have so that we can keep them for Riley, but they didn't make a huge factor because our bank had, um, children photos and then like mid child photos. Um, so that didn't make a huge difference, but I mean, I guess it's nice to see what your donor look like as a baby and kind of have an ideal, but I'll tell you guys that Riley looks nothing like her donor's baby picture. She looks more like me. Um, when I was born, I was really, really light like Riley is. My mom is actually a red bone. Um, so we, Riley and I favor each other a lot and she has some of her donor's physical features, um, but I think the skin color is the main thing that she has of her donor and then everything else is just kind of like a mix, a, a modge podge of different things. Um, but yeah, those are the things that we use to pick our donor. We education, um, his personality, his likes, his dislikes. Um, one of the little fun facts is that he actually likes listening to Drake, even as educated as he is. And my wife likes Drake and she likes Eminem and the donor like that. And my wife was completely sold on him based on uh, the overall picture. But those things like set him apart. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing that we just like to say, a lot of people ask us about our process in general. And what I always say to people, and people might think that it's rude, and I apologize if it comes across that way, but research. Do your own research. I know that people come to YouTube because YouTube is like a learning, sharing experience, but um, 
do a lot of your own research because everybody's journey is not the same. We started with the novel ideal of, oh my gosh, let's have this intimate experience at home and um, we're going to inseminate in our bed and not have to have a doctor there. And then reality kicked in six cycles later and we weren't pregnant and we went to a fertility doctor after continuing to waste money on, you know, $700 worth of sperm um, to find out that we had a fertility issue and the romance was taken out of it. But you know what? We had our child and we weren't continuing. I mean, I would have never gotten pregnant if we would have continued at home. So do your research, um, know what you're doing, um, read up on it, but don't stress about it. I see a lot of moms that TTC and they overly stress about it. Like they took take 50 million tests when they're trying to find out if they're pregnant and they just stress, stress, stress. And I'll tell you what, the cycle when I was not focusing on TTC, the cycle when I was not stressing about it was the cycle that we got pregnant. Um, and I know that people that are TTCing hate, especially straight people, I hear it all the time, hate when people say, just relax and it'll happen. But that's when it happened for us, when we relaxed and we didn't stress about it and we didn't overanalyze everything. Um, that's the main thing. So just don't stress, research. And if you're trying at home and it's not working, then go to a doctor and get a full fertility workup. Doesn't mean that you have to get on Clomid. It doesn't mean you have to get on Femara. It doesn't mean you have to go the medicated psych, uh, the, med the medicated cycle at all, but at least you'll know where you stand instead of if you're a lesbian couple spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on sperm and you have an issue like blocked fallopian tubes that you would have never known about if you wouldn't have gotten it checked out. So that is my donor question video. If you have any other questions, please, before you ask me, think about how you're phrasing these questions. I know that YouTube is an open forum and I, I'm very open about my life. However, the way that some people ask questions come across very rude. So think about how you're phrasing the question, if you have a question, and um, we will definitely try our best to answer them. If they are too personal, I'll tell you right now that I'm not going to answer them. My wife has a very um, guarded stance about our life, and there are some things that she has, we have agreed that I will not share via YouTube. So that is my donor questions video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments section below. Um, and thanks so much for watching. Bye.